Just to wrap up of the council meeting for the city Grand Rapids uh, for July 22nd, 2019. Uh, work session this afternoon was uh, fairly interesting. We had a group from the fire department in to talk about uh, the next addition that they need uh, from a fire truck standpoint, a pumper, it's a multi-use truck that would be coming into the fleet that they have nicknamed already the Beast and we are looking forward to them bringing forward an August uh, ask uh, for the expenditure of the money for that truck. Uh, it's going to be an all-purpose truck. The truck that it's going to be replacing, number 115, has been in service in the city of Grand Rapids and served us well for th over 33 years and we had found out that there's literally no trade-in value or, or value there. So we'll have to talk about what we do with the remaining one. Maybe we donate it to a township that can't afford something that uh, still could use a truck that's decent enough to um, help out in that township area. So that went well, and then Michelle Tovin gave an HRA update. As you know and recall, we've been talking about merging the Grand Rapids HRA with the county HRA. Uh, from an efficiency standpoint and from a coordination standpoint, it just makes sense that uh, the two would work under one umbrella and we would still have some oversight from an asset standpoint on how uh, that would work and it would be run jointly between the city and the county. So we're looking forward to continued work on that as well. Going into the uh, council, regular council meeting, a few things on the consent agenda that I just wanted to touch on. Uh, we've uh, entered into a lease agreement with School District 318 for the sports complex in Bob Streeter Field. As you know, uh, up at the sports complex, there's a lot of work being done up there as they are working on the east grade school, and there's going to need to be some, some modifications and some changes structurally to how some of the fields and stuff are configured, and, and uh, we're working with them on how best to do that to still provide the athletic space that is required, you know, as a community. We also looked for a quote for change order number one for the fire hall roof. As you recall, we've been uh, slowly improving and taking care of issues. Uh, we'd worked on the trenches and the trip hazards and some of those issues uh, inside the building and now they are working on a roof that's been leaky so that we can uh, seal that facility up and that it'll be in good shape for years to go out into the future. We also accepted or approved a resolution uh, adopting our 2019 to 2020, our capital improvement plan uh, for the city of Grand Rapids, so that's nice. And of course, we always review and work on a year-to-year -year basis, but it's nice to be able to look five years out and, and have kind of an idea of where and what we think we need for funds to meet those capital equipment needs. We're getting uh, infrastructure grant from IRRR for a North Homes expansion project. North Homes was in and looking at a juvenile center and some housing requests and needs that they were going to be having uh, for services that were going to be expanding in Grand Rapids. And along with that, they're looking at every opportunity they can from a funding standpoint. And IRRRB is gracious enough and they have funds in one of their funds that uh, can help them. So we serve as the conduit for moving that through. Um, we moved and approved authorization for 2019 budgeted operating transfers. So we had five funds in five areas that needed funds. As we talked about the uh, one of them specific, we talked about the fire department truck. So from general funds, every year we have to move some money over to the uh, fire department depreciation fund in order to build up uh, reserves so that when a truck comes up for replacement at some point in time out in the future, there are funds there. So one of the transfers that was approved tonight was $125,000 from general fund to the fire department fund. That truck that's going to be coming into the fire department, uh, initially we had looked at about $650,000 of spend, and the first quote came back at 800 and some plus equipment stuff on it, and they went back, and creatively the truck committee did of coming up with a way that we think we are going to be able to, or not think, they know that they can replace that truck with equipment for somewhere in the $700,000 range, so it's right in the ballpark of where we had anticipated we could spend based on how that fund has been growing, so all in all that was good. Um, we had an addition. We uh, also accepted from IRRRB Community Infrastructure Program uh, some funds for the Great River Acres and Golf Course Road Utility Extension. 
when I talk about that, I'm talking about the piece of property that the city of Grand Rapids received from Blandon uh, when we gave them the land over on the river in case they were looking at some point in time of doing some expansion off the end of their wood pile. This is the land that if you've driven down Golf Course Road or uh, uh, County Road 76, you'll notice that it's where they are building the West Grade School and there's a lot of work and stuff out there. And we're looking for some utility extension uh, support from IRRRB on that as well. As we go into the regular council, uh, Council Member Conley made the uh, request to have Jesse Souter uh, replace an unexpired term on the Arts and Culture Commission that would expire December 31st, 2020. Uh, Matt Wegworth, our city engineer, was in and talked about a supplemental letter agreement between Grand Rapids Public Utilities Solar Garden Project near the Itasca County Grand Rapids Airport. So it's more work being done on a solar garden and it's in a piece of property that's in a fly zone so you can't build on it anyway and you have to keep the trees cut down. What a perfect place to site a solar garden uh, that needs direct access, you know, from the sun in order to be efficient. Uh, we are continuing to work with the hospital through our police department on hospital security. So uh, Lynn DeGrio was in and talked a little bit about some changes over there, uh, looking at having uh, kind of a lead when it comes to hospital security, but also filling in some of the positions that's required on a part-time basis so that the people that are working there full-time can get some time off when it's vacation and stuff. So working on a list uh, that needs background checks and um, drug testing in order to be completed. But uh, in the next week or two, we are hoping that we've got a full list and complement of employees over there that are working on the security issues to make sure that the employees that work at Grand Itasca Clinic and Hospital are doing it in a safe and protected environment. Also, the last uh, they appointed, uh, we appointed Dominic Di Giuseppe to the position of engineering technician uh, with a caveat that uh, temporarily it's, he's going to come in, the pay is not going to change, it's going to be at 23.21 per hour. But uh, when he starts that position on August 26th, he will start as a non-union, non-exempt employee versus being a member of the clerical union. Uh, and that will be determined where that position should reside at some point in time in the future. But at the, at the outset, uh, he will be non-union, non-exempt. And with that, uh, we're looking forward to, and I would like to just remind folks that coming up this weekend, uh, we've got the weekend of wheels, so the, the, the streetcar, uh, the Rod Association, and the Chamber of Commerce have taken that over. So that's a great weekend uh, that's kicking off what's already been a, a, a very warm but also a very productive summer when you look at traffic in this community. I don't know when I've seen as much traffic flow going through Grand Rapids. And I don't know, some people may think that's a bad thing. I look at it as a good thing if they're certainly stopping and spending money in the Grand Rapids area from a tourism standpoint. But we got the weekend wheels coming up um, uh, this weekend and then the next weekend. Uh, Dr. Jess, 30 some years ago, started the Tall Timber Days Festival and that is coming up the first weekend then in August. Uh, so please get out, take a look at some of the activities uh, that you can, you can participate in and get going. You know, if you like to bike and hike, uh, Cohasset and them have got that, that trail that's working over there, the Taconite or the uh, Tioga Trail. Please get out and enjoy some of the uh, summer activities and stuff starting with what looks to be a great start uh, to the finish of, of summer in Grand Rapids. Uh, and get out this evening, take a walk. It looks like it's a nice day out there and stuff. We encourage people to get out and use, walk across the new ped bridge. Maybe bring a fishing rod, hang a line over the edge, catch a walleye, who knows. Make sure you got a license though. But uh, with that, we look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Take care and have a good evening.